We have seen R type, I type. Now let's look at S type. There are two kinds of instructions. One is load, the other one is store. We use load and store instructions primarily for the data transfer between register and memory. Here the load is actually of I type, only the store is S type. For I type, we remember there are 12 bits allocated for the constant, right? But when it comes to S type, yes, same 12 bits, but the constants have been split and placed at different locations. You need to look at the format here. How we calculate the address? Address will always be RS1 plus sign extension of immediate value. So we always need to calculate this immediate value which is going to be sign extension and that will be added to source register 1. That's how we calculate the address. When it comes to load, it's going to read the memory and load the register. That's what it means. So the address will be calculated using this formula RS1 plus sign extension of immediate value. So it will identify the location of the memory and then it will read the content and then it will store the value in the register. That's called load. So load is primarily for reading the memory and store is primarily for writing the value into memory. So whatever the value we have in register, if we want to write the value into memory, basically we use store instruction. In that case also we use the same formula to calculate the address. Look at the details. There are different kinds of load instructions. Again, remember load is of I type, store is of S type. There are different kinds of instructions, load byte, it's going to load 8 bits, load off, it's going to load off word. When we say word in risk 5 it means 32 bits, when we say off word it means 16 bits, that's the only difference. So in all the cases this is what it's going to do, it's going to calculate the address source register 1 plus immediate value. This immediate is nothing but sign extension of immediate 12 bits. So it's going to read the memory and then it's going to place the value of memory element into register called RD in case of flow. In case of store, similarly you have different kinds of formats, store byte, store off word or store word. So Whatever the value we have in the register, the value will be stored in the memory. That's what store does. Look at this example, pretty straightforward. The format is like this, load word, destination register, and this is offset and RS1. So as per the formula, what we need to do? We need to do RS1 plus offset. So that's how we calculate the address of the memory. Similarly, stored word RS2 offset RS1. So the address is going to be RS1 plus offset. So the value of this particular register RS2 will be stored in memory. Let's say C equal to A, X or B. So here A and B are operands and C is the result everything is available in memory. So we are going to read the operands from the memory and then we are going to perform this XR operation. Finally, the result we need to store back into the memory. That's what we need to do. Let's assume X12 will have the value of A, X13 for B, X30 for the result, which will have the value of XR, XR between X12 and X13. We want A to be available in X12, we want B to be available in X13. So we are going to use load instruction to read the memory and then we are going to perform XR operation. Then finally we are going to store the result back into memory. For that we are going to use store operation. Simple. 
So we have two load word instructions and this is destination register X12 and this is offset and here the source register is 0 because I want to read the location 8 so I don't want to add any more value so I am going to use X0. What is the value of X0? 0. So 0 plus 8 it is going to be 8. In this case 0 plus C it is going to be C. So A will be available in 12, B will be available in 13 and then we perform XR between X12 and X13 and the result will be stored in X30 and then we use store word and X30 will be stored in the location X14. This is X decimal. So at 14 the value C will be stored. We have seen R type, I type and S type. Now let us look at B type. B means branch type instruction. This is how it looks like. The opcode indicates its branch type and it involves immediate value which is of 12 down to 1, 12 bits. So we need to do sign extension of immediate value and then we need to add 0 at the LSB. As per the specification, this is how we need to calculate 32 bits from 12 bits and that is called immediate for branch type. And then if the condition is going to be true, the program counter will be PC plus immediate value. If the condition is going to be false, then the program counter will be PC plus 4. You remember we discussed about program counter, RISC-V processor as a special register called program counter. Program counter will always increment sequentially like PC equal to PC plus 4 because it does byte addressing. It is going to be always like 0, 4, 8. That is why it increments by 4. But when it comes to branch operation, based on the offset, offset will be defined by immediate value. The program counter is going to be PC plus immediate value. That is primarily for non-sequential order execution. We will look at some example. So here there are different kinds of instructions, branch equal to, which means whether source register 1 is same as source register 2. Branch not equal to, if not equal to, always, if, if any condition becomes true, PC equal to PC plus immediate value, offset value. Branch less than, branch greater than or equal to, there is no branch greater than because you can always swap the operands, remember. In this case, source registers, branch less than unsigned, branch greater than, equal to unsigned. Take a look. This is the source code. If A is greater than B, out equal to A, else out equal to B. So to realize this logic, we allocate three registers, one source register X12 for A, the other one X13 for B. There are two source registers and the destination register is going to be X30, which will have the value out. And this is how we will write the assembly program for RISC-V. So here, this is the condition, branch less than X13, X12. It says A is greater than B, but we do not have the operator greater than, so we use less than. In this case, we need to swap the operands, the registers. So, we define something like this, B less than X13, X12. Instead of saying X12, X13, we are swapping it. So X13 and X12, which is same as this condition. We always need to think like this. If this condition is true, out equal to A, so B less than 
x13 x12 if this is going to be true true is the offset it jumps here so add x30 x30 is the destination register x12 is a so this will be added with x0 this is how you can actually load the value this is one of the ways so we use add operation and x0 is always 0 so 0 plus x12 it's going to be x12 what is x12 a so out is going to be a right so if it is true it is going to jump to this particular address that's called branch type non sequential execution if it is false it will execute the next instruction which is going to be pc equal to pc plus 4 so it's going to happen sequentially look at this so the next one will happen sequentially which says add x30 destination register x13 plus x0 x0 is 0 so obviously the out is going to be b x13 as the value of b and then to skip the next instruction what we do b equal to x0 x0 so x0 is 0 0 will always be equal to 0 so unconditionally it will jump to end this particular location and then that's how you can continue with the execution flow this is how you can think of writing assembly program using b type instructions so as i mentioned there are different kinds of b type instructions b equal to not equal to less than there is no greater than so you always need to swap the operands greater than or equal to and then b less than unsigned b greater than or equal to unsigned